Hey everyone, and welcome back. This here is a printed circuit board that I have designed and had made at PCBWay a while ago. Um, they are actually sponsoring this video here so I can put it through a torture test. Having deja vu? Well, I already tried to put it through a torture test to see how much current we were losing or how much voltage we were losing through the traces in the circuit board. The only thing is, last time all I had to test it was this. This goes up to 150 watts of load. Today though, we're going to try it with this, which can go up to 600 watts. And if this circuit board does anything good at all, then at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can order your own. Now I have several challenges because this thing can pull up to uh, 600 watts. Uh, to be more specific, uh, that would be up to 40 amps at, uh, I'm not sure what the rated voltage was. Um, but these things uh, was designed for an ATM style automotive fuse. So there's these little guys here. Right now there's five amp fuses inside, which will not be enough. But the biggest fuses that I have are 30 amp fuses, that's these green colored ones. Uh, automotive fuses are color coded in case you didn't know. So basically we'll be able to go up to uh, 30 volts, uh, 30 amps I should say, but the good news is we can try doing this on all of the pads because the pads are a different length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up a power supply uh, which I'm going to get to in a moment because my favorite power supply cannot supply enough current to test this for real. I'm going to hook up a power supply here and then we're going to draw a load off these terminals, you know, for each channel, one, two, three, and four. And we're going to check how much voltage is lost uh, from the positive back to the negative here. So uh, basically, we're going to check across kind of a couple terminals and see how much voltage we lost. Probably from here to here and then from here to here and then we have to sum those two up to see how much voltage we lost. In the automotive world, an acceptable uh, voltage loss is uh, somewhere around 0.1 volts uh, per side of the circuit. So 0.1 volts on the positive side, 0.1 on the negative side. And the reason why I have to torture test this thing is because I have a little breakout board for a computer power supply, which is supplying lights in my other room. My Patreons have seen that video already. The fuse holders that are on there are heating up with only three LEDs, and I'm trying to use the 12 volt rail for more than just lighting up LEDs. So the solution will be to use one of these boards if it's good enough. And this here is what I'm going to use to provide the impetus for this test. You can't even see this because it's so big. This is a giant 100 amp hour lead acid battery. This thing, fully charged like it is now, uh, puts out about 12.6 volts and I am able to pull up to 800 amps from it in one go. Oh, this thing was heavy. So I'm gonna hook this up, get the test ready to go and explain where we're going from there. Okay, I had a little bit of drama setting this up, but I think you should be able to read this display here. Uh, if not, I'll do some sort of, uh, you know, editing in post. But what I have is I have the electronic load off to the side. You can just barely see the fans there. Uh, and I have this set to uh, 20 amps. Uh, these are 30 amp fuses, so we can go up after that. But we'll start at 20. We have here the uh, lovely Kaiwitz multimeter on the input here on these two crock clips and we have this uh, voltage measurement here which is doing actually a four wire me measurement of the uh, load here. So the difference between this Kiwitz meter and this uh, voltage here uh, will tell us our voltage drop across this whole thing. So the more different this number is to this one the worse it is because uh, this one here is taking it right at the terminals here to here and this one here is taking it from the terminals here to here which means that all of the current lost inside this board will basically be um, uh, this number minus this number all right and we're looking for a maximum of 0.2 volts difference 
So let's give it a shot here. The um, lead acid battery has a lot of capacity in it and it has a lot of current cap um, handling capability. I know that because I accidentally shorted it. That was uh, scary. But here goes. We're going to 20 amps. All right, so that's pulling 20 amps there. Yeah, pulling current, yeah, 19.99. And if you look here, 11 point, we'll say 11.7. This one's 11.79. So let's say 11.62, 11.75. So that is within the margin of error that we would uh, consider acceptable. So that's pretty good. So already 11.6, 11.74. So we got 150 milliamps of difference between the two when we know that the acceptable limit here would be uh, roughly 200 milliamps of difference. So already this is way better than the setup I have in the other room. Uh, let's crank this up now. We'll go up to 25 amps. Hopefully that's still visible on your screen. So now we've got 11.45 and here we have 11.63. So that's just straddling the, the acceptable 200 milliamps. That's not too bad. Is this getting warm at all? Oh, so we do have a problem here. This board is warming up. You know, it's not that bad. Warming up a bit on the underside there, 145165. So we can go up a little bit more. Here's 30 amps. Why did the 30 amp fuse not blow yet? Well, it's on a time delay. You'll see. It needs to warm up first. But 11.53, 11.29, we are now over the limit. So we're about uh, 50 millivolts above the limit but this thing at least on short bursts can definitely support 30 amps we'll see if that fuse will actually blow and you'll see immediately because the uh, voltage will shoot up and quite honestly my 14 gauge wires here are actually starting to heat up the ones coming in here uh, because we're losing about a volt through them Oh yeah, starting to smell toasty. We are passing 300 watts through a single channel over here. Don't know how much longer until the uh, fuse is going to blow. Ooh. Yikes, that's getting that's getting pretty hot. Okay, so that is too much uh, voltage drop here and uh, basically we're getting 11.3, uh, we're getting, you know, 250 milliamps, you multiply that by uh, 250 uh, millivolts, multiply that by 30 amps, and that tells you the the, the, the power loss in here. So I'm going to turn this off now and let everything cool back down to temp. And here we go. See, we're recovering voltage now. Instead of rerunning the tests for all the different channels, I'm pretty confident now that, especially if I limit for to 10 amps per channel, I'll probably be just fine because the heating seems to be coming from the actual fuse connector, which is fine. There's a few different connections there. It makes sense that most of the voltage drop would be there, plus the fuse drops some voltage itself. So I figured instead I would just hook up a temperature probe. It's taped right to the bottom side of this fuse. You can see it's 19 degrees C. The board is still warm because the ambient here is about 17. And if I fire this up again, hopefully you have that in view. Uh, you can look down here, Celsius and Fahrenheit, to see the voltage rise at 30 amps and corn tact. So this was actually heating up pretty quick. So let's see what, what, what happens here. While it's still cool, I'm just going to make sure it's nice and stuck down there. And it is. So it's basically the positive path that was um, that's heating up because it's coming up here, up through the fuse, down onto this uh, leg here, through the screw terminal, and out. I can probably optimize that. Like for example, if you use solder pads, it'd probably be best. 
but uh, these fuse holders are actually pretty good and I like the serviceability of them. But yeah, you can see the, the temperature rise pretty quick here. Uh, we'll go up to maybe about 60C and then I'll put it down to 10 amps so it'd be, you know, like a single 10 amp maximum and we will see if uh, that's any better. Uh, also, these batteries are pretty awesome, but I would really like to build uh, some sort of PCB to grab power from them and be fused. That would be fantastic too. So there it is, already 50C. 120F for you uh, continental types. It's crazy because this amount of current, I basically put uh, two terminals here instead of just uh, the one. Uh, a to save on terminals, right? You know, use the same terminals. But two is so you can bring two smaller wires in and connect both of them in parallel to have less voltage drop in the wires. Okay, there we go. We're almost at 60C. And then when we drop the uh, current down to 10 amps, I want to see how quick it recovers. It seems to be actually heating up less quickly as well. And don't forget, we're at 30 amps, and these are 30 amp fuse. This is the biggest fuse I have. Probably going to be running these more around the 10 amp range. There's 60C. Okay, drop to 10 amps. Get a lot less voltage drop now. Look at that, temperature is dropping. So definitely um, with ambient air being what it is, about 17C, um, it's more than enough uh, cooling just in the open air to support 10 amps. Because if not, this would keep the same temperature or go up. So it's actually dropping. And don't forget, there's a layer of Kapton tape sticking the probe on so it's not actually open air underneath there. So at 10 amps, I would be more than confident. Now the interesting thing is um, PCB houses like PCBWay also offer thicker copper on their boards. So I might do a run of the thicker copper ones. Uh, this is one ounce per whatever. Uh, I think it's one ounce per uh, square foot copper. You can get uh, two ounces per square foot copper. The price does go up, of course, you got more copper, but if it's something you really need, like let's say you're building a motor driver, they have that option for you. You can see here it's going to reach an equilibrium about around 40 degrees C. I think that amount of temperature rise will be okay for us, because don't forget it's also the capped on tape underneath there. Yeah, that's really the only hot part I can feel is underneath the fuse holder. Ooh, it startled me. Yeah, 36C. The uh, terminals themselves are cool to the touch. Yeah, cool to the touch. It's just the, um, it's just where, where this here connects. Uh, I can actually improve that maybe by making the tracks a little bit differently. Uh, or maybe making through holes with soldered wires from the top to the bottom to try to spread the load or even uh, to try adding some solder onto the um, onto the actual track but you know I figured this would be a great first attempt this is version 1.0 after all turns out it's pretty good so it looks like yeah 32c and it's going to drop a little bit I think that's plenty fine um, so the next thing is I will show you how to order your own boards if you want them at PCBWay Whenever you go to one of my videos, um, all you have to do to get the PCBs yourself is to scroll down and you'll typically see something like um, in the description, get yours here. And that link is directly what you need to click. I'm just going to use my middle mouse click to open it in a new tab over here. And then this brings you to PCB way. Now I'm just uh, signed in. You can, you'll just be prompted to sign in when you click add to cart, but you can see here the PCB, the entire layout, everything. So all you need to do after that is just add to cart. And then here is where you put your details in. Now I'm in Canada, um, but I'm also cheap. So what you can do for the shipping over here is you click down here 
and you just pick the cheapest shipping. See that? China Post. It's $10 instead of $22. And then look, my total cost here is $15.38. So let me just show you some other tricks though. Uh, first things first. Uh, I don't know if PCB Way advertises this, but uh, if you actually change this to 10 pieces, the price barely goes up. Sometimes, some designs, the price didn't go up at all. In fact, the only reason this went up is because the shipping cost went up. So the price of the boards is not affected. So if you, you know, if you need a bunch, you know, get a bunch. But if you only need five or so, I would still recommend get 10 and then you can give them away to your friends or whatever. Over here, you don't need to change anything, um, but you can change the solder mask color. So I've got the nice black ones in this video. You can get whatever color you want, but just know that some solder masks are more expensive and they'll also make them um, you know, take longer to build. So if I change to red, the price didn't go up, but now instead of 24 hours, it's three to four days. If you change to down here, the mats and the purple, you'll see the price will go up. See, that's a significant change. So, you know, standard green is fine for most people. Go for it. Um, I think this black one doesn't change the cost. No, it doesn't. So if you want matte black, it changes the cost. Uh, black uh, will not. And then here, the silk screen can change the lettering. Um, don't we need to worry about this. The finish also changes the price. I usually go HA, HASL with lead. If I'm feeling fancy, you get the gold uh, one, but again, much more expensive. There's nothing wrong with the hassle with lead. Uh, and then uh, if you tick this box, if they're doing gold coating on other boards on the same sort of, uh, on the same sort of uh, big, you know, massive board order, uh, they will gold coat yours for free. So even if I pick this, I always tick this little um, thing. Uh, this is not needed. This here is the thickness of copper I was talking to you about in this video. So, you know, 1708, if you change to the thicker stuff, 4853 is still not bad, honestly, for 10 boards, it's less than five bucks a board. So if this is something you're going to use for the rest of your life, like these uh, PCBs specifically, that might be worth it. Uh, and then also I like to pay the extra $3 just to not get the PCB number on the board. But if you don't mind uh, the looks, then just click that. And then, uh, yeah, basically you save this to cart and then you just check out like you would any other uh, st uh, storefront. So that's it. Uh, let me know if these kinds of videos interest you in, you know, testing out stuff to destruction. Do you guys want me to try the two ounce version and maybe even the three ounce version? Let me know. And uh, don't forget when you order stuff from my links, uh, you know, get yourself 10 because it's virtually the same cost. Thanks for watching.